1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest countries. corruption scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial and I'm Patrick Teo. Court was back in session today after the previous week was cut short due to Najib's sore eyes. But after obtaining an MC for his illness, the former Prime Minister had gone down to Tanjong PI to support his party, Barisan Nasional, or the National Front, in the by-election currently being held there. Tanjong PI is a district in the southern state of Johor, about a four-hour drive from Kuala Lumpur. Najib had stayed there for a night. His little excursion out of town was brought up this morning when lead prosecutor Gopal Sri Ram asked that Judge Colin Sakera imposed tougher bail conditions on the accused. He said that this wasn't the first time it has happened and brought up a previous occasion where Najib had obtained an MC and attended a political meeting at PWTC. Sri Ram stated that the accused should not abuse the kindness of the court but ultimately Judge Colin let Najib off with a warning. He will not accept such behaviour and will not hesitate to punish parties who mislead the court. Once that was settled, Najib's lead counsel Shafi Abdullah jumped right into his cross-examination of Sharol Halmi. This is the ex-1MDB CEO's fifth week on the stand. In 2009, 1MDB's auditors, Ernst & Young, or EY, had begun asking questions about where the company's $1 billion investment into the Petro-Saudi joint venture had gone. Sharol had turned to Joe Lowe, Patrick Mahoney and Casey Tang for answers. In the end, 1MDB had shown EY that the money was converted into Murabaha notes. Sharul agreed that this was to stop the auditors from asking more questions. He said that it was also to preserve 1MDB's relationship with Petro Saudi, which was his priority as CEO because of Najib. But the plan didn't work. The same year, EY refused to sign off on the company's audit report as it was not up to par. As usual, Sharul looked to Joe Lowe for a solution. Why didn't the board of advisors take it up with Najib himself, Shafi asked. Sharul said it was because they were looking for a solution to close its books for that year. The lawyer suggested that this was an attempt by Sharul to sweep the real financial health of 1MDB under the carpet. Absolutely not, came the answer. Shafi then brought up a 5 billion US dollar loan taken by 1MDB which was supposed to be used to develop the Tun Razak exchange into an international financial center and for the development of Bandar Malaysia into a transit hub. But the witness said only a very tiny portion was used for the projects. Most of the loan was channeled to Petro Saudi to pay for the Murabaha deal. Sharul also clarified that the total came up to a smaller sum than 5 billion US dollars. After sifting through more documents, Sharul concedes that there was a possibility Petro Saudi was playing them all along. This was after Shafi questioned Sharul about a proposition by Petro Saudi to 1MDB to invest in GDF Suez, a French based energy, electrical, and gas company. Petro Saudi had proposed that 1MDB acquire a 4.2% stake in GDF with a 20% discount to make the investment. The lawyer called this proposal meaningless and a con job. In hindsight, Sharul agreed that it was a sham deal as the numbers didn't add up. 
Shafi then zeroed in on 1MDB's memorandum and articles of association, specifically the part where the company was to obtain the Prime Minister's written approval before it could make any financial commitment that involved a government guarantee. The lawyer used this to ask Sharu if the PM's written approval was obtained before the disposal of 1 billion shares in 1MDB Petro Saudi. The answer was no. Sharul said the matter was handled by Nick Faisal Arif Kamil, who was 1MDB's chief investment officer. He was also the CEO of the company's former subsidiary, SRC International, which is the subject of another trial against Najib. Shafi suggested that the disposal of shares should be declared null since the PM was not involved, but Sharul disagreed. But what he did agree to was that no matter how powerful he thought Najib to be, the former PM still could not overrule 1MDB's board of directors. Before wrapping up for the day, the lawyer asked Sharul about the 1MDB Petro Saudi joint venture. 1MDB pumped in 1 billion US dollars while Petro Saudi invested 1.5 billion US dollars, making it a 40 60 agreement. Shafi pointed out to the witness that since the incorporation of the JV in 2009, no board meetings were ever held. It's shocking, isn't it, to say the least? Shafi commented. Sharul agreed, but explained that 1MDB had tried their very best to call for a meeting. And at 3.45pm on the dot, proceedings ended for the day. This time, it was the judge who had a prior engagement. But before he left, Judge Collin reminded lawyers that the trial will go on until 6pm tomorrow to make up for lost time. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. The team behind the Najib Razak 1MDB podcast are Revati Supramaniam, Yappik Kwan and Yvonne Lim. Timothy Acharyam provided additional reporting. And I'm Patrick Teo. 